next, I would like to request you to share your thoughts on the second uh, issue that you raised on the uh, inequal uh, development or inequality in Bhutan. Maybe to give a perspective or set a context, uh, one reason why I uh, resigned from Integration Commission, despite reservation of my close friends, uh, lecturers, and to my parents, a couple from uh, Chaskar, Mongol, they didn't have that sort of uh, minimal fare to pay to travel from Chaskar to Mongol. Uh, and reflecting back on my own village uh, of uh, nine households, uh, 14 now, when I tried to see objectively, I didn't see much. Of course, I studied, uh, did my undergrad, went to London. But then there's no much sort of difference between what it used to be then and now. And then I thought, what is the purpose of life if I cannot really make a difference uh, in my own community? And uh, during my undergraduate days, our Zongolobi used to say that people in the East who are capable, they come to Thimphu Paru or buy land houses and those who cannot afford, they do come, but then they work as <clears throat> gardeners and maintain uh, apple orchards. And now by extension, who can afford and who can kind of take that disaster decision, they go to uh, say uh, other countries. So given that sort of uh, east to west migration and the 2017 uh, population projection say that by 2047, Thimphu would have 30% of Bhutan's population and followed by Paru or, and uh, Finsley. And uh, uh, Tashi, uh, places such as Tashigang, Mongol would lose population. Why? Because there is that uh, sort of incentive. Of course, people say Tim, living, uh, living, uh, kind of living standards in Thimphu is very high. But then despite that, despite that knowledge, people still choose to. For example, uh, I did my postgraduate diploma in public administration. Whatever job, however lucrative it be, be it planning officer in municipalities in Samdu Jonkar or Gelefu, people would choose to kind of take job in Thimphu because there is more opportunities. So given that sort of a reality and exposure I've had vis-a-vis -vis that sort of a narrative or that at least that policy ideals that we pursue, as mentioned in that uh, principles of state policy in the constitution, Article 9, of balanced regional development, which I didn't say it. So because of that thing, and when I came back from London, my decision, I don't know how far I can stick with it, is not to look for job in Thimphu, Paro, and Finsley. And fortunately, I happened to get job in uh, Tashigang because I can write, but if I don't practice it, there's no point because everybody can say it. And see why that inequality is uh, an issue is because if you see the major of which is because Bhutan, I would like to believe it is a state-dominated sort of economy where state institutions play a critical role. So all ministries uh, of uh, central agencies are located in Thimphu because key institutions are here and people who also would like to stay here, stick with it. And the very fact that offices such as STCVL and Bank of Bhutan Limited, whose head office were in Finsling before, had to shift to Thimphu in itself it speaks that it is important that they stay in the capital city. And when state, I mean, when major institutions who have that history of say four or five decades feel that need to be in the capital, why won't individuals? So given that sort of uh, uh, growing, uh, and recently uh, the poverty analysis report 2022, so there's huge gap. Uh, I mean, uh, the poverty is uh, by and large a rural phenomenon and the Dongkok such as Shemgang, Tashigang. So we talk on the other hand talk about that evident household. So if we don't take care of or take institutions or make economy vibrant in that part of the region, I think e uh, equality will be quite uh, difficult. If you uh, can share your thoughts on how this can be addressed. I think uh, one uh, recommendation that I know of is of uh, relocating uh, the offices, government offices in particular, to other districts, right? So uh, if you can elaborate on that, and then if you have uh, other recommendations as well. As, as you were saying, like, it's easy to point out the issues. We know this the issues, but these are the issues, but uh, how can these issues be resolved? How can we stop people from coming, coming uh, to Thimphu from the villages? How can we have uh, equitable development uh, outside of Thimphu and uh, uh, some of the core areas in the country? When I did that blog or article in 2020, it was after that 
say, five, six, six years of thinking. I first uh, uh, provoked about that topic when I was uh, pursuing my PGTP at RIM, but I couldn't really come up with that comprehensive argument because every time I talk with people, so people would question I and mean, counter question, and in that sort of a discussion, I came about how do we tackle, and because I try to analyze their point of view, and why I say that it is the last mile or the last option we have is, people say about industrial parks, developing industrial parks in that region, maybe so, sort of especially economic zones. Uh, that Bondema Industrial Park, I think it was uh, identified sometime in 19, late 1990s, because there is no takers, now it is, I mean, used for uh, construction of one of the Gelsung sites. So in itself shows, uh, for me, that there's no takers. Uh, because maybe, as BOB and STC will shift at their office, maybe private enterprises don't feel or aren't confident uh, that there are enough opportunities there. Second, people argue that it is because, I mean, there is, uh, one should establish educational institutions. And to an extent, Sherapte, uh, Kangdung, people uh, use that sort of epithet or um, that name, uh, educational town. But then my argument is, who are the buyers? The students. Once uh, Sherapte closes, uh, shops also close. But then my uh, question is, there were that uh, shops uh, since 90s, uh, that uh, one example is Palace, and another that sort of like, uh, in Kangnu, and you compare, and in my interaction with people who grew up in Thimpu, see the scale and the growth of businesses, you compare. And in itself, show, uh, for me, that shows who are the buyers and who has that sort of a purchasing power. So then educational town, also that sort of approach doesn't really help, because if you, do, uh, do, if you don't take people who have that purchasing power, then people will not feel that need. Uh, last time, uh, uh, I mean last week when I was coming from I didn't say to uh, Thimphu, so we uh, students, uh, they bought uh, sheep, uh, banana chips and oranges from Gangola. And I would like to believe that farmers or the workers of Chali, uh, who's, uh, who sell their uh, vegetable produce at Gangola, and Tidangpi, uh, between uh, Lingmetang and uh, uh, that Yongkola, uh, if you have traveled to that part of the uh, country. So my belief is, People might, when they earn a little, however minimal it be, feel that, oh, there is that source of livelihood because we can sell our surpluses. And why I say is, when you take institutions there, because if you take, say, a certain ministries or important office, road connectivity improves. And along with that, people also travel. And as they travel, they will not only support that, I mean, the place they live, but then, uh, along the highways or the roadways, they buy and which, in a way, However minimal it be, it helps in giving some uh, a bit of hope to people. And only by doing that, I think we can keep people in that part of the uh, country. And this I say because it has not only that sort of economic perspective, but also sort of a cultural uh, angle. Because as I was uh, alluding to the, that sort of importance of culture earlier, we prize our culture, and I would like to believe that most of the values that we share or we try to project are based on our traditional communities, which in rural areas. I don't want to say that we need to keep rural communities as they were before, but then if we somehow kind of keep rural communities, their sort of livelihood, or help keep uh, sort of a uh, certain aspect of rural life, then it might help I mean, perpetuate the values that we have. This I say because when I was studying at Dramatse, a uh, group of my friends and I, we walked back I mean, one whole day to uh, observe that uh, community festival. Once I came to Thimpo, I didn't, it didn't cross my mind. What I see in that sort of transformation in my mind is that sort of uh, declining appreciation of the traditional festival or uh, because this is one aspect, I mean, if you see from cult uh, cultural perspective, it helps in preserving our tradition. And if you see from social perspective, these are the events that brings families together. Because if there are no events, such events, then there's no, I mean, I don't think people would find a reason to go there. So 
Uh, inequality not only has that economic component, I think it has a larger dimension, uh, particularly uh, if my views hold some kind of uh, value.